Can you see that okay? Okay. Huh? Okay, yeah, so uh, I work at Bano, so uh, we're working to allow better communication between financial institutions and their consumers. Uh, we are hiring. Uh, there, please send an email with your resume if you're uh, interested. And uh, come find me, and a few of us are here. I can introduce you to the team. Um, and then if you want to follow along in GitHub or uh, make corrections or questions or comments, you know, please feel free to. Um, so for the agenda, so I'm going to be talking about some definitions. I'm going to go through a code example that demonstrates how to use ScalaCheck. And then uh, I'm going to point out some references that I found to be helpful. Okay, so for definition, so ScalaCheck, the definitive guide from Ardema, uh, is a very good book, and uh, I liked its definition. So compare it to unit testing. So it's closely related to the difference between specifications and test. Um, so as a quick example, a specification would be if I have a list X, I reverse it twice, and I still get the input list. A test would be I instantiate my list uh, maybe with two elements, one element, and zero elements, and check that my reverse function upholds that property. So you can see that in the former case with specifications, it's much more powerful because you're able to define a spec rather than an individual example. Um, and it also usually has better code coverage because you're testing more cases because uh, you're relying upon ScalaCheck for generating test data that you can use to verify that your property is true or not. Uh, it's also concise, which makes it easier to ma maintain. Um, you don't need to have a bunch of example tests. Uh, you can specify generators and properties, and we're going to explain them now. Uh, I'm going to explain them now. So property specifies behavior, so it would be the specification. Um, a generator generates test data to be used when testing properties, which, we just, which I just defined. Um, and then it integrates with Scala test and Specs2, um, and I, I've used it with those two libraries, no problem. So in the code example, uh, let me just show you the build SBT I have. So uh, I'm using ScalaCheck, that's it. For the data structure that we're going to use, uh, it's a my list that takes a type parameter of A, and then as we saw yesterday in the cons example, um, it takes an element of type A, and then the rest of the list, which is of type my list of A, and uh, then empty, which is just the terminating case, or nil as we know it in Scala. Um, so an example uh, is you know cons one, cons two empty. Okay, so we have a function here that we're going to apply this Scala check to. Um, so you see reverse. So reverse uh, accepts a single argument, which is a my list of A, and then returns a my list of A, and it hopefully will reverse the list. So for example, cons one, cons two empty. We reverse that, that'll equal cons two, cons one empty. Now let's look at a property. Uh, now before we look at the properties, I'm gonna give a kind of a a lie type signature that I think is helpful for explaining it. Uh, so we're going to import org.scalacheck prop and then prop for all. For all uh, takes a gen of A, so ba that basically means a generator of data of type A. It then returns a function that takes an A, so an actually created instance of A, and then it, uh, that function returns a Boolean, um, and then that returns a prop or a property. So gen list of int, which, we're gonna, which I'm going to explain in a moment, is a generator of my list of ints. So what that means is we can generate um, my list with the int type parameter, uh, and we'll get to that in a moment. So we just are defining two, well, I'm defining two properties here. Uh, reverse two times the same. So what that means is for all my gen list of int, if we look at our signature gen of a, and then we have a function here that given the a, the my list of int, we're going to reverse it twice and check that it's equal to the original list. So reverse it twice, it should equal the original list. That's a property that we want this uh, data structure to have uh, for this function. Um, and then we have a second property that is obviously invalid, but it says for all gen list int, if I reverse this list, the reversed list should equal the input list, which is true in some cases, but not for all cases, and that's what we care about. All right, so let's look at the generator code. So for the generator code, so we're importing org scala check gen, uh, gen const, which will take an A and return a gen of A. Um, 
We're gonna do, use choose. That'll take basically a lower bound and an upper bound. So zero and 25 would be an example. And that'll return a generator of ints between those two bounds. And this is a little bit of a lie, but it's, it's useful for demonstration, I think. Uh, pos num is a generator of uh, positive numbers. I'm using int. This is an actual type signature of pos num. Uh, but I think it proves that it shows the point. So gen my list of int. So the, the purpose of this gen list in is to create a generator of my list of int test data, um, which we're then going to apply to a property or one or more. So for choose 0 to 25, we're going to choose a depth between 0 and 25. In that example before, cons 1, cons 2, empty, that had a depth of 2, just to give you an example. So we're making a list of different sizes uh, in order to produce more test data. Um, then we call gen list, which we're going to get to in a moment, and that takes in uh, basically a gen of A. So the A in our my list is an int, and we're using pos num to give us that gen of A. We're ultimately producing a gen list of A, but we need a gen of A uh, in order to produce this gen of my list of A. And then we pass in the depth, and the depth matters because once we've hit zero or less, we're going to terminate with an empty. If we look at gen list A, it takes in a gen, which is a gen of A. Um, that's the A in the output type, gen my list of A, and then a depth. Uh, and then again, remember the depth uh, states how the width or rather the depth of the list. Um, so if the depth is less than or equal to zero, then we return the empty case. We're gonna, I'm gonna explain that in a moment. Uh, and this means terminate the recursive data structure. Uh, otherwise, we're going to call gen cons, which takes in the generator of type A, and then the depth argument. Uh, and this is for purposes of building the cons. So there's a function that I think is helpful for understanding what's going on. Uh, gen list of int is, there's a sample uh, method on the gen trader class, and that will return uh, an option of my list of int. So if we call sample, we get some cons 27 empty. Uh, if we call it again, we get another data structure. Um, so you can see that this data will be useful for plugging into our property when we test that out. Uh, empty generator, very simple. Uh, the type will be gen my list of nothing, um, and then it's gen const empty. So const, remember, is a to gen of a. Uh, gen cons, a little bit more to it. Uh, so it takes a gen of a, which has type gen of a. Uh, it takes a depth, which is an int, and then it returns a gen my list of a. So this is the cons case, because obviously the empty case alone isn't very interesting or useful. So we call gen list gen depth minus one. So whatever our input depth is, we're going to subtract one from it, so that if we want a list of depth 20, we're going to do gen list pos num, which is, has a gen of int, and then the depth minus one, so that we eventually terminate. Uh, the gen will have the type A, which we need to construct the cons, and then we yield cons A, which remember has type A, and then list, which is the second argument, my list of A. Now, if we look at actually checking the property, uh, we call net my spec reverse two times same dot check, and we get a print statement that says, okay, it passed 100 tests. If we call reverse one time same dot check, Scala check tells us that it's been falsified after two pass tests. So you might say, well, why would it pass two tests? Well, if we pass in empty, or we pass in a, a list with one element, then it would pass that uh, property, but it's not for all. Um, and we can see that with this input list, obviously if we reverse that once, it isn't equal to the input list. Um, yes, yeah, so that's more or less all I have. Uh, very good book, Scholar Check Definitive Guide by uh, the author of Scholar Check, uh, Artem Press. Um, and then uh, Lunar Yorn, uh, he had a very good Stack Overflow answer that helped me out to understand how to generate test uh, data structures. Uh, if anybody has any comments or corrections or uh, questions, uh, please feel free, if I have time. Um, it's a good question. Um, I've never used personally, and I've you know used Scala Check on a few projects, but you know nothing extraordinary. Um, I haven't used for integration test Scala Check, which I'd be interested in doing. I just haven't done it. Um, 
But I would think that if you can use property-based testing, uh, prefer that because it'll be more powerful and concise. Um, I mean, I could see example-based testing working if you fixed a bug for some special case and then you want to verify you fixed it. Uh, but that's just my uh, thoughts from, you know, using it a bit, so. Oh, hey, Mark. Uh, for the prop, uh, I'm sorry, Martin asked, uh, is the generated data stable? Um, meaning, will it necessarily generate data, or will the property necessarily always? Will, will it always generate the same data every time you run the test, or could it pass the test one time and then fail the next time? Uh, I don't know Scholacek well enough. Uh, I think I've read in the book that it generates random data, but I don't know enough to claim I know. Yeah, Eric? And uh, Eric just answered Martin's question that it doesn't, if you didn't hear him, it doesn't always generate the same data. All right, uh, thanks a lot.